Welcome, Coral Reef Aquarium School Basic. Today is our uh, fourth episode and we will be talking about the uh, salinity meter. Now there are four main types of salinity meters commonly available in the trade. And the first two types uh, are hydrometers and these are calibrated versus the buoyancy or the density of uh, seawater versus freshwater. Now I give you two figures on how hydrometers can look um, and um, then the third type is a refractometer which is calibrated versus daylight refraction uh, through water or through seawater and I also give a figure how that looks picture and the fourth one we will be addressing the fourth one separately okay I will cut to the chase. What I will recommend is a high quality premium brand refractometer. And um, what I base my recommendation on is simply the success rate of reefers to keep the wanted salinity level that I see. And I see it's definitely more frequent that reefers run into problems with hydrometers. And this is my experience. And it's based on that 10 years ago I could find myself doing house visits of fellow reefers to help them figure out what was wrong in their aquarium. Now, did I find a hydrometer 10 out of 10 times? That was the problem. And changing to a refractometer was the first step into solving that problem or getting that pa tank back on track. Okay, I will not argue with anyone stating it is possible to do an accurate measurement with the hydrometers. I fully agree. But I will argue it is easier with a refractometer. More reefers are successful with that. Okay, number four then. Number four is a conductivity meter calibrated versus marine water. And this technology is commonly used for reef computers. And uh, to me, it was a good surprise getting back at the hobby to see all the new available measurement gauges from HANA Instrument. It is a company I think highly of. Now, and one of these gauges was a handheld salinity meter. Unfortunately, I haven't had the opportunity to field test uh, this uh, salinity, salinity meter yet. So it renders me unable to recommend it. I mean, user friendliness, repeatability and all of that things. But I expect nothing less from HANA Instrument than that this is an excellent piece of equipment. So I have high expectations on HANA for, for, for this uh, salinity meter. Okay. That said, our next episode, we will be focusing on circulation flow or the circulation pump. In the aquarium and past this video we will transition to the project phase of this course and I hope you stay tuned and I see you in that one okay um, project part salinity meter um, on the table I have two refractometers uh, now Ideally, we should have been doing this video uh, at daylight, but my children thought differently. So I also have a lamp here that would resemble daylight. So this would be partly a simulation. Um, why you want to do it at daylight is that it could change the uh, light refraction a little bit through this instrument. So you should be able to do it at daylight. Now, this refractometer, it's a D&D refractometer, it's 15 years old, it served me well. And this refractometer, it's also a D&D refractometer, but it's brand new. What is the difference? This refractometer is calibrated versus a brine solution, being water and sodium chloride. And that 
that was uh, how you did it 15 years ago um, in the industry. Now this one is calibrated versus seawater and actually the refraction differs uh, between uh, brine and seawater. So for us having marine or seawater aquarium this makes more sense to have a refractometer that is calibrated versus seawater. The calibration I'm talking about is the calibration of the scale that we're reading. I mean, the distance between zero and maybe 35 ppt, that is a calibration. And that calibration is done in the factory. So it's differently done between these two instruments. Secondly, so there's a benefit here. Secondly, this refractometer has a scale zero to 100 ppt. Whereas this one has a scale 20 to 40 ppt. So it's magnified to the range where we're actually interested for our aquariums. So it's easier to read uh, accurately this one. So it has a second benefit. That said, of course we're going to use this new product because it is a product improvement. Now, before leaving the old product, I will uh, take this refractometer. I didn't introduce it, but on the table as well, except of the light, I also have some aquarium water. I'm trying to keep this aquarium water at 34 ppt. So when I do a reading here with the old gauge, I take the syringe, I rinse it five, six times. Now I rinse it, I put three drops on the blue uh, glass and I close the lid and I do a reading and this one reads 35 ppt slightly higher than what I'm targeting now final step for me before putting this one back in the cabinet will be I'll rinse it in fresh water but I'm not going to do that on film I'm going to rinse it in fresh water, then I'm going to leave the lid up and I'm going to let it dry. Once it's dry, I'm going to wipe it and then put it back in the cabinet. When I do a new measurement, I take it out and wipe it again, do the measurement. Okay. Now, let's put this one away now. Now, this one is a brand new. We will start by checking the zero. When you check the zero, you, for these gauges, they are calibrated at 20 degrees. If you check your zero at 20 degrees, you will also take benefit of the automatic temperature correction. So I set my climate unit to 20 degrees and it's been so for, for a day. So it's 20 degrees now, and um, I can do the zeroing. The benefit with the automatic uh, temperature correction of these devices is that if I happen to find myself in a situation where it's 15 degrees or 25 degrees in the room, which I'm going to do the reading, it, uh, it will work as long as the device has soaked for something like 30 minutes or so. I'm going to check the zero. It actually comes perfect zero from the factory. I guess I was in luck. Now, had it not been zero, I have a screwdriver and I take off the lid and then there's an adjustment screw where I can change the level to zero. Okay. Now, I don't want this to spoil my... Uh, I don't want the uh, osmosis water to spoil my next sample, so I try to wipe it off, that off as much as possible. I rinse the syringe, put three new drops, put the lid on. When you put the lid on, you want to look for that there's no wire bubbles on the blue part, which is the part you're reading. And I'm going to read. And this one reads at 35, no, sorry, 33.5. 33.5, so approximately they're on the same water 
these two gauges read one and a half ppp different. And that is what you expect. So I'm slightly low in my aquarium to the level which I want to keep. And I would calculate and do an adjustment. Now, let's see, okay. Final step for this gauge before I put it back in uh, the cabinet. I'm going to rinse it in fresh water. Um, I'll put the lid on that one. Before closing this episode, um, I was planning to have a third refractor meter here for this video. And the third one being the Red Sea refractor meter. I had acquired one sample, but I actually decided to send it back to return it. And the reason being that the differences with the, D and, um, the Red Sea to the D&D refractor meter, uh, from my perspective, is first they do the calibration at 20, uh, 25 degrees instead of 20 degrees. But I don't see a benefit in doing the calibration at 25 degrees because first and foremost, when I'm doing the PPT measurements, I'm looking at the mass fraction and the mass fraction doesn't differ with temperature. It is the specific gravity that could differ. But secondly, my gauge here is at 20 degrees now, so I will be doing my reading at 20 degrees. But I want my scale um, calibrated on 20 degrees. Of course, one could argue that the Red Sea having an automatic temperature correction, that would work as well. But I don't see a benefit in 25 degrees. But actually what pushed me to send it back was when I realized that the uh, specific gravity zero and the salinity uh, zero, they, they didn't align. So uh, I couldn't get my head around it. And if I can't get my head around it, then, then I don't want to play with it. Um, I think the device works um, as long as you keep it to the PPT side, then I think it will work perfectly for you. But uh, yeah. Uh, it didn't join this room for that one. I will settle for this one. I think it's going to do the job perfectly. This would have worked as well because it's worked for 15 years, but you need to be aware of the uh, that it's reading high when you're looking at seawater. Okay, that said, I thank you for your attention. I uh, wish you a pleasant evening and I see you in the next episode. Bye bye.